not a proper Jew, the wrong sort of Jew, self-hating Jew. I was called that for the first time when I was 19 years old at university, where I made a speech in defense of a pro-Palestinian motion. And it was in the Jewish Telegraph. And they front-paged it, this self-hating Jew. She must hate herself when she looks in the mirror. I was 19 years old. I've had people phone me up and say, we're going to put you in a wheelchair. We know where you are. We're outside your door. Probably the worst incident was when I was with my sister at a meeting about anti-Semitism with all Jews on the panel. And people were shouting at us, capos, capos. You're called traitor Jews, capos. Capo was a Jewish inmate of a concentration camp who collaborated with the authorities. We were talking people who collaborated in annihilation of their own people. So it's a pretty bad thing to be called. And it's Jews calling other Jews. Not nice. As a Jew on the left, who is intensely anti-racist and intensely aware of what anti-Semitism is and how dangerous it is, to be called an anti-Semite oneself is about as low as it gets. It's a bit like being accused of paedophilia or something. I cannot really think of anything worse. And it undermines the fight against real anti-Semitism. This is one of the most frightening things for me. People have been weaponizing accusations of anti-Semitism for political ends. The fact that that is going on seriously undermines and endangers our chances of dealing with genuine anti-Semitism, which is a real threat in our society. One of the biggest problems we face is the treatment of our community as if it was just one monolithic block. This is the typical trope of all forms of racism. The Jewish community is not one undifferentiated thing. Its opinions vary, just like every other section of the community. A lot of us are anti-Zionists, and people need to realize that going back generations, Zionism was not the creed followed by all Jews. Far from it. Marek Edelman, leader of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943, said that Jews should always be with the oppressed and never with the oppressor. I mean, for a section of the population whose history, much that's magical and wonderful, but so much that is to do with persecution, the fact that people with that history should identify with the oppressed in every setting seems self-evident to us. And that's where our support for justice for Palestinians comes in. We are identifying with the oppressed. And for anybody to suggest that it is the Israeli state which represents the oppressed in that conflict is pretty short-sighted and misguided. Stop! All arms trade with Israel now! Jeremy Corbyn was the reason that more than 300,000 new people flocked into the Labour Party at the end of 2015 and soon after. To have somebody leading that party who was in solidarity with the oppressed against the oppressor consistently throughout his 30 plus years as a member of parliament was just such a breath of fresh air. Somebody who clearly wanted to transform society who really wanted to tackle privilege and inequality in society. It was a hopeful time for all of us and it was a project that we thought worth fighting for. And it needed defending because all those people who have a vested interest in putting a negative to everything positive that Jeremy said and did, they were mobilizing against him and what he represented. One of the most ludicrous allegations against Jeremy Corbyn was that he exhibited anti-Semitism in chairing a meeting in 2010 in Port Carlis House where the main speaker was a Holocaust survivor from the Netherlands called Hayo Meir. I was at that meeting and what Hayo did was to put on a screen comparisons between the treatment of Palestinians in the occupied territories and the treatment of Jews in uh, areas occupied by the Nazis. And there were uncanny and very unnerving similarities between the way these two communities were treated by the occupying powers in each case. I saw in Auschwitz that if a dominant group wants to dehumanize others, so as the Nazis wanted to dehumanize me, this dominant group must, must first be dehumanized in, in a way themselves by diminishing their empathy due to, to propaganda and, and indoctrination in order to be able to be as cruel as some were. Okay? But the same holds, holds nowadays for, for Israel. The most shocking thing to me is the portrayal of that meeting as somehow despicable because we saw a Holocaust survivor comparing his experiences with what he could see happening to Palestinians. What was horrifying about that meeting was that there were a bunch of really 
intolerant, bigoted, aggressive, bullying, pro-Israel campaigners in that room who shouted Hayo down. It went on for a long time and lots of us in the audience was, was sort of saying to Jeremy, can you please call the authorities to get these people out? They are harassing and intimidating an 80 plus year old Holocaust survivor. It was intimidating, it really was, to be there. I remember it vividly. It's really important that we don't forget to talk about freedom of speech. We are being no platformed, we are being cancelled, we are being denied the freedom to express legitimate points of view. People who claim to care about civil liberties, human rights, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of the press and so on, all those people should be up in arms about what's been happening to Jeremy Corbyn and his associates in the Labour Party. So far they're silent. There are so many people who have just ceased to care about truth and facts. This is very hard to counter when the mainstream media themselves do not show respect for actual truth and actual facts in some cases. The media has totally sidelined and ignored left-wing Jews. Not only left-wing Jews, eminent Jewish scholars who have written extensively on the subject of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and demonstrated that the definition that is being pushed to define what is anti-Semitic is untrustworthy, faulty, actually dangerous because it conflates being Jewish with being a supporter of Israel, being Jewish with being a Zionist. One of the most important Jewish academics who has spoken on this and been ignored is actually the American academic Kenneth Stern, who wrote the original document upon which the IHRA definition is based. And he has said on a number of occasions in writing, in letters to Congress in the States, I abhor the way this definition that I drafted to assist data collection is being used to suppress free speech. That was not the purpose that it was designed for. I abhor the way it is being deployed in universities to prevent people who have a certain view about Palestine and Israel from expressing it. Anthony Lerman, former director of the Institute for Jewish Policy Research, has written extensively on this subject. Do you ever hear of these people being called to, in to be interviewed on any mainstream organization? Never. And all the work that they've done is completely ignored. As a college professor, I'm also concerned about Jews that are anti-Zionist. And they're left out in the cold here and in fact made targets. We have uh, websites that go and hunt them and put dossiers on there. I think this will only encourage that type of activity. You can have an organization like the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, which was one of the instigators of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission report into Labour Party's handling of complaints about anti-Semitism, quoted over and over again as if it were a leading authority, whereas in fact it was created in 2014 during the Gaza conflict. And these people are quoted over again. Type campaign against anti-Semitism into Google and you will get innumerable media references. Type in Anthony Lerman or Kenneth Stern and you'll get a few learned dissertations here and there and virtually nothing in mainstream media. We look back at the history of oppression and pogroms that my grandparents had to flee, came to this country, settling into a host community where you know that you are not treated as uh, equal or you're treated as weird and odd and you have a funny accent. Just to, to become part of that and to join in the resistance against fascist movements, Cable Street, trade unionism. So many Jews were active in the trade union movement, still are. So many Jews were active, going back to South Africa again, who supported the ANC. Looking at the civil rights movement in America where so many Jews were on the front line. So that is our tradition. That's why we've adopted that slogan about being with the, the oppressed and never with the oppressor because there are great Jewish traditions that we should be hanging on to, not this lining up with the establishments, helping to destroy a movement for justice and peace and decency. We know what side we are on. We're with the people who want justice and peace and decency. So I've talked about how incredibly difficult it is to get dissenting, independent Jewish voices heard in this country. The media aren't listening to us, but Double Down News is here. So please, if you can, support Double Down News on Patreon. Join the future of journalism. Join Double Down News on Patreon.